morning. We'd like to welcome all the registrants, speakers, honorees, volunteers from seven different countries, Bangladesh, Belgium, Canada, England, Holland, South Africa, and the United States, all participating in this conference today. Legendary leaders will share their knowledge, 300 years of knowledge in one room in one day. Our conference is made possible by the sponsorship of the Barbara Ann Carmona Center and the International Ban Asbestos Secretariat and Fujiribo Diagnostics. FDI has been a, a corporate sponsor for three years, and we thank you. We have a diverse group of attendees this year, veterans, labor, doctors, scientists, advocacy organizations, of course victims, trial attorneys, both sides, plaintiffs, and defense, all together to learn and grow. We'd like to expend, extend a special welcome to Dr. Ruktashel and, excuse me, Dr. Robert Cameron, who's the director of the mesothelioma program at UCLA, who's also joining us here today. Our special thanks to Dr. Ruktashel, Dr. Harbert, Linda Remington, Marianne Short, Patricia Ellis, and the amazing Carmanos planning team and volunteers. ADO has been working with Carmanis for over a year on this conference, and we would really like to thank them. And would you take a moment, please, and stand as volunteers so we can recognize you, please? Lori Kazen Allen from IBIS traveled across the Atlantic from England to join us here today. And Lori is legendary and a wonderful ADO supporter. Lori, please stand. This morning we have Mr. Terry Lynch. He's the International Vice President, President, Political and Legislative Director, Health Hazard Administrator of the Insulator Union, and Terry will deliver our keynote address, just following our prestigious awards. Thank you, Terry. Please stand. Now this is the interesting part of our volunteer conference. Every speaker here today and honoree has donated not only their time, but covered their travel expenses. And please join me in thanking them. And would you please stand? Last year, we began our educational sponsorship client tribute program to help defray the costs of our conference and actually add new features like this videotaping that we started last year, which will remain online indefinitely and makes this an, a legacy conference for people around the world. And these donations don't fund any of our operational expenses, but they greatly advance our educational efforts. And we are very, very pleased to have these firms as gold sponsors. And um, in the effort of time, I'm not reading off every name, but I would like to ask our educational sponsors to please stand. Please, and a, a round of applause. I'd like you all to stand. <laughs> Terry? ATO is powered by people in time and donations, and we wish to thank Lee Giannini, Paul and Michelle Zigabom, and the John McNamara Foundation for generously supporting our conference as event hosts as well as volunteers. And we do ask you to stand as well, please. We don't want to wait until the end of the conference to, th to thank the ADO conference volunteers. Many of our state reps are also in the auditorium today. Each volunteer has been affected by asbestos. And we want to start by thanking Bonnie Diana, who may not even be in the auditorium right now, who's, oh, Bonnie. She's the, come over. She's been the event chairperson. And each committee chair we'd like to also uh, introduce you to. But there are four people that are unable to be here today. And they've also worked for a year. And they deserve special <laughs> recognition because they'll be watching the tape uh, later on. And it's Ellen Turkeltrot, who's our webmaster, Marjorie uh, Ernberg, who's our national director, and she did all the registration and programs, Herman Hamilton, executive director, and Marsha Poe, help with tributes. You're all missed here today, but we do want to thank the vol ADO volunteers here who unselfishly gave their time to make this conference an overwhelming success, and I would like to ask our volunteers to please stand, Dr. Richard Lemon and Dr. Arthur Frank, Bonnie Diana in the corner, Doug Larkin, Sherry Erzinger, Lee Giannini, Kate, Diana, and Caitlin Burton. Thank you.
It's time to give a special thank you to Jordan Zivon. He's our national spokesperson and Jordan Summers for last night's terrific performance. Jordan is a man of great distinction, quietly humble, enormously gifted, and possessed with kindness beyond belief. We're grateful that he's our national spokesperson. And if you missed last night, you're in for a treat. At 5 o'clock tonight, Jordan and Jordan will both perform again. And Jordan's fabulous new album comes out, or CD, um, on April 15th. So congratulations, Jordan, from your ADO family. ADO is pleased that the United States Senate continues to acknowledge the severity of the asbestos problem in the United States by unanimously passing the fourth annual Asbestos Awareness Day resolution. We'd like to thank Senator Bacchus for his leadership and strongly encourage the Congress to build on this um, uh, momentum to achieve a total ban. It's the only way we can hope to ever end the insidious epidemic of these preventable diseases. The Asbestos Awareness Week that begins on April 1st is, offers a beacon of hope as we continue to work to prevent exposure and cure these diseases. Some of you are new to the ADO conferences, so we want to spend just a, a few, just a minute explaining about our organization. We chose April 1st as Asbestos Awareness Day, and frankly, it was to create new awareness about a very old issue. And yes, it's no joke, asbestos kills, but we know that education will save lives. And today, I'd like to recognize three of uh, folks in the audience who began with us uh, at our very first conference in Washington, D.C. Mardell Knight, Dr. Barry Castleman, and Dr. Richard Lemon are attending their fourth annual Asbestos Awareness Day conference. Please stand. <laughs> Doug Larkin and I founded ADAO for Victims and Their Families in 2004, and we both knew that asbestos knew no regional boundaries and nor did the dust discriminate. Doug's father-in-law, Bill Shields, was diagnosed with, with mesothelioma, and so was my husband, Alan. They chose to have the radical EPP surgeries to remove their lungs in hopes of extending their lives. Tragically, Bill passed away six months after his surgery, and Alan in May of 2006. Our office is the Internet, as most of you know, and it's fueled not by large corporate donations, but by volunteers. And in the past four years, we have made significant advances in asbestos awareness. Our last since our last conference, we've had a remarkable success, thanks to you, our many volunteers, supporters, and of course, our Science Advisory Board. We'd also like to thank the Zevon Tribute Event educational sponsors. Again, ADAO was able to, to share half of the proceeds and send it to the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation. We presented a check for nearly $8,000 to MARF. Thanks again to our sponsors. Fear and despair are paralyzing, but knowledge is power. We can't change history, but we can give hope to the future. Once muffled by isolation, victims and their families now unite for asbestos disease awareness prevention. Indeed, we've built a community that feels like family. And we know firsthand that for each life lost, a shattered family is left behind. We've learned that for many of the sick and dying victims, their last wish is to be heard, and that's what ADO is all about, the voice of the victim. Now, due to the meaningful conference agenda and our tight time schedule, we have some information during the day that we'd like, that I'd like you to just put a little housekeeping tips so we can keep on track. There'll be two 30-minute uh, Q&A sessions. And if you'll please refer to your programs in the very front, there's full speaker biographies as well as some last-minute changes. Um, we, Dr. Peter Ors from the World Health Organization, and Dr. Uh, excuse me, and Mr. Pat Martin from Canada, send their regrets as they had a schedule conflict that prevent them from sh coming today. And due to taping, we're going to ask that you minimize background noise and coming and going. You are certainly free to do that, but if you'll just minimize the noise, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, good news, lunch will be downstairs after the award presentation, and we'll also have some ADO resources, wristbands, um, a 2007 box DVD set of our conference, and Lori's amazing book, uh, Killing the Future, for sale downstairs. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow's hard, but tomorrow is a new, it starts a new year. And we would like to invite you to join us at the Marriott for a Remembrance Brunch beginning at 9.30. And it's an opportunity for us to not only share our memories of, of those we've lost, comfort each other, but renew our commitment to end disease. And there are, there are seats available. We ask that you see Bonnie Diane if you're interested in coming. You do need to have an RSVP, please. 
We're looking forward to sharing an incredible conference with you today. Great news. Next year's fifth annual will be held in Manhattan Beach, my hometown in California. We haven't decided to have it at the Marriott or the beach. We'll be taking it. We'll be polling you folks on their way out. Doug, you don't get to vote. <laughs> Our volunteer, Margie Ernberg, puts together this slide. This is a hard one to end with, but I hope it empowers us to work towards education and eliminating these diseases. It tells a powerful story. One life lost to asbestos disease is tragic, and hundreds of thousands of lives lost is unconscionable. And if you take a moment, you'll see Les Scramstead, my husband, many others, Doug Larkins, the list goes on. They're there remembered in a slide. And we look forward today to making this a great year and thank you in advance for your support and your patience and welcome you.